Hi everyone and welcome back to our PCG Graph tutorial series where we're going through the fundamentals of core understandings of what the PCG Graph actually is and how we can actually use it. So let's take a look at the PCG Graph and we're going to continue on with our spline that we started off with in the last episode. And in particular we're going to look at how we look at attributes and what else we can do with, in other words, like manipulating uh, those point samples that we're getting from it. So let's take a look at what we can do. So here we are from our first episode where we looked at getting spline data and sampling that data in any kind of way. But let's say I want to spawn something on the last point of that spline. Okay. Well, that's actually quite simple to do because um, as I mentioned in the first episode, down here we have our attributes, which I'm getting because I'm inspecting our spline sampler. Each column is an attribute. Okay. So index, position, position, blah, 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 blah. And in this case, I wanted to pick the last one in my index. So I want to pick the maximum number of the index attribute. So very simply, all I can all I have to do is to select attribute. So I'm going to bring in one like here, and it's going to select the correct attribute and output just one point. Okay. So input source here, we're going to change it from last to index. And then We'll leave it like that. That's totally fine. And an operation we can change from min to maximum. So give me the highest one of the index attribute, which would be me this point here. And once I've done that, I can do another static mesh spawner. And we'll make it spawn some flowers or something, I guess. Uh, let's go to mesh entries. And we'll just give it a flower. There you go. Okay. And there we go, we've got flowers spawning at the very last point of our spline. Okay, so it's putting that right there for us. And if I wanted to, I can randomize these points too, using some transformations. So I can go back into my attribute here, and I go to point transform points. And this takes in a number of points. In this case, we've only got one. But it'll take in a number of points here, and it'll randomize what it does to those points. We just, there you go. And over here on the right hand side, we can determine what we are doing with those randomizations. So here I can say the offsets are for the positioning, the rotations, and scales. So I'm actually going to mess about the offsets a little bit here too. So offset minimum, we're going to go minus 10 minus 10 in the z i'm gonna leave it at zero and then positive 10 positive 10 in the offset max and then uh rotation we're going to rotate in the z axis between minus 90 and 90 and on a scale we're going to go from one to let's say 1.5 okay so now when I move this around, it's going to randomize what it does to these flowers. So it'll move them around and regenerate them accordingly. Okay. So that's not too bad. Okay. That's a little thing we can do there. But let's say I actually want them to generate randomly around the base of our fence over here. Well, how can you do that? So like we've got attribute select here, we're selecting the last one. By the way, if we're doing the first one, exactly the same, just change that to minimum. You'll get the smallest number of the index, which is zero. So easy enough to do. Um, but let's say we want to do randomized. So if I'm going to take the spline sampler, you know, a list of all our points here, I'm going to do random choice. And what it does, it basically going to put in some points and it'll just choose some and then it will discard some. And over here on the right hand side, we can determine what kind of randomization it's going to do. So a fixed number will tell us how many it's going to keep. So it's going to be randomly choose one of those points. So rather than just the last one, we can get any one random point. So if we put the chosen into that transform point now instead, one of those points is going to have the flower. There you go. There. Okay, so, and if I move it around, it will update and refresh. And it's now moved somewhere else. Let's go to the last one. Okay, so you can randomize what we do there. 
But let's say I actually want it to pick more than one. So random choice over here, fixed number, I can type in say like five, okay? And with those five, it's now gonna put and point those out and that's gonna generate five flowers around randomly. I'm going just to uh, mess about the transform offset as well. We're going to go to minus 50, minus 50, 50, 50. And yeah, slightly better result there. There we go. Okay. So it's picking just five random points for us. And as you may tell from that node, you can also get what's been discarded and do something with those if you like. And with random choice, we have this fixed number of five. Now, we may not want it to be five every single time. That also may change. But as we saw last episode, if we were to expand the bottom over here, over here we can insert attributes uh, or settings rather um, in here uh, as we so wish. Okay. So the fixed number we can actually mess about with and, and insert that in as a parameter if we want or whatever. Okay. So they come through there, transform and store, spawn our flowers in. So another thing you can do with the static mesh spawner is you can actually give it multiple mesh entries. So over here on the right hand side, we've got uh, just our flower patch here as a descriptor, but we can actually add another one in and put something else in there. So we'll go in here, we'll just do search for another flower type. Ideally one with different colors, but if not, can't we pick eight? Uh, we'll guess we'll do that. And we'll give it a different material, actually. So I'm actually going to go into the node here. So as you can see, we're using a Cinti pack, if you're familiar with these at all. Um, uh, but we've got various different alternates we can try out, see what kind of ones we like to look off. So we've got blue one there. Still blue, still blue, still blue. That's exciting, isn't it? They're all blue, these ones. Uh, let's go have a look at this one. There you go, red. That's an interesting one. We could do something with red. In fact, let's do that one. So it's M polygon 02A. So it's this one here. So what I'm going to do is uh, we'll bring that back to as it was. Uh, there you go. Uh, but on my test PCG, I go to override materials and we can give it that material. Okay, so now I've got two mesh entries going on in here. And by default, it will randomize which one it's going to use. So we've got some red ones here, we've got some yellow ones, uh, more yellow ones, yellow ones, red ones. So yeah, it's just going to randomize all along that there. But you can actually change the weighting of this as well. So if you go into your PCG and go into state mesh spawner, uh, in each of these indices here, you've got weight, and it says 1 and 1. So obviously, we weight this however you want. So if you type in 2, this will appear twice as, as more likely as the red ones would. Okay, so that's totally up to you how you would want to use that, but it's a, a thing you can do. Um, and yeah, you've got some pretty fun things you can mess about with inside our static mesh spawner. There you go, we've explored PCG a little bit further and started talking about different types of ways of sampling our points and what we can do with them and manipulating them. And hopefully you're understanding a bit more about what we mean by the attributes. Now there's more we can do there, but what I'm going to do in the next episode is take a look at how we can replace one of our meshes inside our spline there and swap it out for a different mesh. And that'll be based upon the number we insert, but also we're going to insert like a gate, for example, in our fence panel here. So if you want to watch the next episode, you can watch it right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Daily. We find all my videos early from just $1 a month. A massive thank you to all our patrons and YouTube members for their continued support in the channel. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe and I'll see you all next time. Bye everyone.